Good morning, Dr. Sade Utsode Central. We are so excited to have you with us this morning on our online platform. So we are excited about today's service because the Bible says we must rejoice as we come into the courts. And this is exactly that. We are going to rejoice. As we are going to go into our praise and worship moment, the Bible also says praise the Lord with gladness. So we are not going to let anything stand in the way of us praising the Lord with gladness. Let's go.
Your grace keeps flowing just for me. I fell so many times, but your love I'll never fail. It keeps coming in again and again. It keeps coming in again and again. All oh, your mercies, Lord, and your grace, oh God, they keep flowing, they keep flowing, just for me. Somebody just join me and say wave up to wave, so wave up to wave. Just want to hear the voices. Come on, let's tell them it keeps flowing for me. Come on, lift it up. Wave up to wave. Wave up to wave. Your love is Come on, somebody tell him he's loving to you. And wave up to wave. Just love him, just love him all over this place. Just love him, he's the great I am. Somebody just stand up and just love him. Just tell him, God, you've been good. You've been great. I was supposed to be dead, but God, you came through for me. I was supposed to be gone, but God, you've been good to me. Lord God, my business was supposed to fall. But Lord, you just brought it an opportunity. Lord, you've been good to me. Yes! You've been a good God. You've been a faithful God. And Lord, I can never you are a good, 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 good God. You are a good Father. And we're so thankful for you, God. For the last time, wave up to wave. Somebody's getting healed in this place right now. Your healing is coming. Wave up to wave. What a time in the presence of the Lord, worshipping the Lord with gladness. Now, if there is anyone who is tuning in for the very first time, in these parts, we welcome people in a very warm way. So we welcome you and we hope that you have been impacted up to this point. And if we have any birthdays that have been happening over the past week, 
we are so glad that God has given you this time to be able to experience his goodness and going forward experience more of who he is we pray that God really gives you your best days in the days to come and if we have anniversaries that a couple our couples have been having we are so glad that God has kept your relationship up to this point because really God really values the institution of marriage it is his idea to begin with so we celebrate you we know and and are very sure that God will keep you going forward and he will make his name known and glorified through your marriage another thing that we have is the doxadeo kids devotion podcast i think we should put our hands together right there because these podcasts are really life-changing and you can play them in your car as you travel to school with your children and they are really really going to help your children understand the word of god so what you can do is go on to any platform or that is an online platform or an online store that you can just type in Doxadeo Kids Podcast and you will find that the devotions are on there on a daily basis that you can have your kids listen to as you are going about your day. So yeah, that's a point to celebrate right there. Now we are in a very exciting series called The Follow Series, which is us really going deeper into what it means to follow Christ. And we are this week having another installation of that very series. Our pastor is about to lay it all down and tell us what it actually means to be a part of this body that is the body of Christ. So let's go and listen to the word. hello and welcome to our follow series we are now in our third installment we did the first installment where we spoke about surrendering to christ and we say that uh, if christ is not lord of all he is not lord at all then we did the second one where we were talking about uh, the church the right church where you have to go to where the church that you have to choose it has to be a church where they encourage the word of god they also encourage fellowship and it's a place where they equip people so that they can express their calling in their homes in their workplace and in their city or any place where they uh, they live now today we are going to be looking at our third installment and uh, this one is devoted to prayer we are looking at uh, the importance of us being devoted to prayer the scripture that we read last week talks about uh, things that uh, the uh, believers were devoted to but uh, I left out prayer deliberately because it is one of the things that I thought we could devote one installment of the series uh, completely dedicated to prayer so it says in acts chapter 2 verse 40 to 42 and with many other words he testified and exhorted them saying be saved from this perverse generation then those who gladly received him uh, received his word were baptized and that day about three thousand souls were added to them now the scripture we read is 42 it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers so last week we looked at uh, the the apostles doctrine which is the word of god we looked at uh, fellowship and we also looked at uh, being equipped you know so that you can express your calling in the marketplace you can express your calling in your city and in your family so today we see in the this passage that one of the things they also devoted themselves to was prayer so prayer can be done corporately and we don't have a problem with that actually the prayer they're talking about here uh, is mostly corporate prayer but you can also see that the early church or the habits 
of the early Christians or even those of the Lord included personal secret prayer. A time completely and wholly dedicated to spending time with God in prayer. So one of the most important life-giving habits is to spend time in the word and in prayer. So the Lord gave us a great example of uh, the importance of prayer because when you look at the life of our Lord, you are going to see that the Bible says so much about the habit of prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, uh, uh, had developed. He talks about how he went out, you know, and prayed loudly sometimes, you know, with loud cries, you know. I, I'm sure Jesus was a Pentecostal because we pray aloud sometimes. Now, I want us to look at some of the considerations that we need to look at as we delve into this uh, uh, very important subject of prayer. So the first one is that um, you have to understand that there is no distance between God and us. That distance that religion promotes is something that is not real. Because God is among us and we are in him. So in the book of John chapter 14 verse 20, it says, On that day you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. So what we are talking about here today is that we are in Christ and Christ is in us and we are in God and God is in us that distance is actually been completely completely removed we are no longer in the Old Testament where people you know had to stay outside the temple and only the uh, the high priest went into the innermost you know uh, place of the temple to go and offer sacrifices now we are able to get to God because God is among us and we are in God. So we need to realize that there is no more distance between Jesus and us. Where I am, there he also is. You know, uh, that's where Jesus is. And where I am, there he is. And where he is, there I am. I, I, I don't know how to explain it to really emphasize the importance that uh, Christ is here with us. One of the biggest things about religion is that it teaches about a God that is very, very far away. And that is in the future somewhere. We are going to be with him one day, but today he is very, very far away. That is religious nonsense and it's not true because the Bible says he is in us and we are in him. Just like Jesus was in God, we are also in him and we are all in God. The second one uh, to consider, the second thing to consider is that we need to understand that we now have access into the presence of God. We don't need a mediator. The only mediator we need is Christ. And Christ already mediated that for us. He already opened the place uh, for us so that we are able to go directly into the presence of God. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, the Bible says, And so, dear brothers and sisters... We can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. So, there is no reason whatsoever for you to feel 
you know, secluded or excluded or to feel like an outsider that you need something special to be done for you or to you, for you to get into the presence of God. Christ already did that for us. So it is crucial for you to understand those two important considerations. The first is there is no distance. The second is Christ opened up, you know, our way into the presence of God. Now, there are three things today that I want us to share about prayer that are very, very important. We have established the fact that it's important for us to develop a habit of personal devotions, of personal prayer, a time that we separate to meet with God. Now, there are three things I want us to look at today. The first one is Prayer has to be a priority. The second one is being busy is not an excuse. And the third one is it should be a private moment between you and God. Now, let's look at the first one. The first one says, uh, I said it should be a uh, priority. Now, in Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible says, Now, in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Now, this is something that Jesus used to do uh, before he started his day. He woke up very early in the morning, before everybody else, I'm sure, woke up, and he went to a place that is uh, uh, solitary. In other words, he went to maybe a bushy place or a place where there aren't, many, there aren't any people, and he sat there. And he prayed to his father. Now, prayer should not be looked at as a last result. You know, prayer should be a priority. Don't take prayer to be something that you do when it's necessary. You can see here the Lord actually did the first thing that he did in the morning before he did anything else is that he went out and he prayed. So it's so crucial. And it's so important for the life of a Christian that before you do anything, it's important for you to pray. Now, I know that there are some people, they say they are not mourning people. I understand that. But it's also very, very crucial for you to understand that you have to set aside a deliberate time for you to prioritize prayer. I don't mind what time, I don't care what time it is, but it's important that you have to prioritize it. It shouldn't be something that comes as a last resort. When everything else fails, you pray. No, 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 no. Before you do anything else, you need to pray. You need to meet with God and you need to uh, bring uh, that before the Lord. The second thing is this. A lot of people give an excuse for not praying because they say they are busy. You know, they are so busy that they can't find time to fit in God. Can you imagine if God was so busy and he never fitted you in? You know, he, when, 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 when you try to get a, a hold of him or you try to get his attention, he would be like, you know what? I am so busy doing one, two, three things. What it, that would mean is that you are not a priority to him. You are not important to him. So if you think that you are very busy to find time for prayer, it means that God is right at the bottom of your priorities. It means that God doesn't make much, um, uh, is not of much importance to you because you have all these things that you have listed and right at the bottom is God. Whenever your busyness, you know, is not that much, then you find some time to pray. Now, Luke chapter 5 verse 15 says, uh, but the news about him spread even more and large crowds would come together to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. Now you must see, this is a busy man. This is really, really, really being busy because he is praying for people, he is healing people, and he's doing all kinds of things. But in verse 16 it says, yet. Are you seeing what I mean? It says yet. It doesn't just say he often withdrew. It says yet. In other words, even with all these things that are happening, yet... He often withdrew to a deserted place and prayed. 
so in other words even if you are running a multi-billion rand company yet you find time to pray even if you are running a very very busy school with a thousand children yet you still find some time to pray you know even if you are a, a doctor you know seeing so many uh, patients you know in a day yet you still find time to pray if you are so busy you know you must understand part of your busyness must include time for prayer actually you must uh, if somebody was to tell you that uh, uh, let's go and do one two three things and it is your time for prayer you must be able to say to them you know what i am busy i will be praying or i am busy i am praying so don't think of prayer as an inconvenience to your busyness you know prayer should be part of what you do prayer should be part of the things that you put on top of your priority list you know you can't say that you are busy and then prayer is not part of what you are busy with you know you can see the lord here it says that he was so busy and yet he withdrew to a deserted place to go and pray now the last thing is you have to um understand also that whilst we encourage corporate prayer where we meet with other christians to pray you have to develop a personal uh discipline for you to secretly pray on your own you have to develop that habit where you go out and you pray on your own in matthew chapter 6 verse 6 the bible says but when you pray not if it says but when you pray go into your private room shut your door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly so ladies and gentlemen while we encourage people to pray together we also want you to have this secret moments with god dedicate a secret time with god don't be a sunday lover you know where you just go out you know and uh, meet god on sunday uh, with another group of people a crowd of people and after that you disappear for one week and you show up again how can you develop intimacy with god like that if you only show up once a week you know you have to develop a time when you are going to spend some time together i know myself that uh being a married man you know i don't think that uh, it would be a good idea for me to only you know have uh just that secret time when we have time me and my wife just you know uh once you know in a while but you know we, we deliberately curve out time to uh, understand each other and to talk to each other and develop that intimacy between you know the two of us you know so it's very very important that you have to understand the same way with god you need to find time with him so let me just wrap up this uh this morning or evening or whatever time you are watching this you know the first thing that i said is that you have to remember that there is no distance between god and you anymore god is not far away god is near the second thing that i said was that uh, remember that the access into god's presence was opened through the blood of our lord jesus christ the lord's blood was like that sacrifice that the priest held uh, that the priest held before god in the temple to uh, bring the sins or to bring the petitions or stuff for the people now that atonement blood was the blood of our lord jesus christ and it just opened up the holy of holies for us uh into the presence of god then the second the, the the thing that i said was that i want to mention three things three things the first one was that you have to prioritize prayer make sure that prayer is one of your top priorities the other thing is that you can't be too busy to pray it doesn't matter what you do even if even if you are a president you need to curve out time to pray you know god is going to grant you some ideas about how to lead the people and then you have to make it a habit to secretly pray even if we encourage 
uh, people to pray together so may you uh, find some time to pray and may you develop that uh, you know habit to pray we are going to meet again uh, this coming week as we are going to bring you another installment within our uh, follow series so god bless you and uh, we will see you again uh, next week did i or did i not tell you that our pastor breaks the word all the way down this was a really good sermon and we are glad that you've experienced it with all of us that are tuning in today now we are a church that gives we believe so much that giving is a part of our worship to our lord and savior jesus christ now there are many ways that we use to give they are on the screen now you can use either one of them and give your offering because the bible says the lord loves a cheerful giver so as you give give cheerfully we are so glad that you have been committed to giving and are actually experiencing what it means to actually have the kingdom of god move forward with your contribution now that's it folks we have had a great time together today and we are uh, expecting that god will do more uh, during the week so yeah see you soon I hope you have a lovely Sunday.